Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to talk about a quite fatal mistake many people do with databases. And specifically, I want to show this example with a room database, because if you don't consider this, what I'm teaching you in this video, then you might end up with corrupted data. And I think that is the last thing we want as app developers. So in case you want to follow along with this video, then you can clone the initial branch with the wrong code, which I'm going to migrate here to write code. Clone this and then you can follow along, but we won't be writing a lot of code, but I will explain why the wrong code is actually wrong and then show you how you can fix it for your product. And last but not least, before we get started, if you want to learn automated testing on Android on a real world example for the industry and you want to get a skill that that will make you stand out in front of your competitors, then you can still get my new testing course bundle for a discounted price, but only for 12 more hours when this video comes online. So if that's something you want to learn and you want to save a few bucks, check the first link in this video's description and let's get started. All right, so I'm here on the wrong code that I've also pasted below, so as a GitHub branch. And the issue I see many people do is when they have multiple tables in their room database. So for example, here we have an event table, and each event has the option to have one or multiple attendees. You can think of this like an event in your Google Calendar app, for example, some kind of meeting for your company or so. And for each meeting, you can just add a bunch of email addresses with attendees who then get an invite. Let's say you now want to cache such an event on your local device. So you have an event table and you have an attendee table in your database. So here with this annotation, in case that is new to you, we just make sure that we really connect our event table with the attendee table and we specify hey, one event can have as many as attendees as we want. And then we have our attendee DAO correspondingly, which exposes functions to insert attendees, to get attendees for an event, to delete attendees. But we also have an event DAO here where we can insert a new event, we can get an event by its ID, we can delete an event, and we can insert a bunch of attendees that belong to a specific event. And I don't really want to overcomplicate this, so let's get straight to the point by going into our main view model. At this point, I just create a sample event here in this insert event function. We then get the ID of that event after inserting it, because when we insert an event, we obviously also need to insert all attendees that are part of this event. And since those just belong to different tables in our database, we need to make two distinct database calls. So after knowing our event ID, I'm creating a bunch of attendees with just sample data here and assign the corresponding event ID to that attendee so we know which attendee belongs to which event. And then after that, we just loop over our attendees here and we insert them all in our room database. What is wrong with this approach here? Doing it like this is quite dangerous because there are quite a few things that can go wrong. Because whenever you're performing multiple database operations, like here we insert an event and attendees, and these two belong together, then you need to ask yourself, what happens if we insert such an event and in between, before we insert our attendees, our app crashes because of some other threat or so? Or what happens if we insert the event that was successful and then inserting attendees crashes because the device runs out of storage. Those are valid scenarios which aren't very common, but do happen. And to fix that, we need to use a so-called database transaction. A database transaction is in the end an atomic operation which allows us to execute a sequence of database operations where either all of them are executed or none. And since inserting these attendees here belongs together with inserting an event, and we only want to insert these attendees if inserting the event was actually successful and vice versa, we need to put these two calls in a so-called transaction because a transaction will make sure that this, these changes are only applied in our database if all these calls succeed. If there is just one failing call, none of these are applied. So we don't end up with an empty event which does not have the attendees that should belong to that event. And creating such a transaction is actually very easy and straightforward with Room. We just want to go to our event DAO and in here we just want to create a transaction annotation oops transaction make that a suspend function insert event with attendees and here we can pass any arguments we like or we just need to uh, create an event for the attendees in this case so on the one hand an event and on the other hand a list of attendees and the difference is in, in contrast to this function where we just specify the annotation for transactions, we need to specify the implementation here. So we want to now have one function which just bundles these different database calls and only executes all of them if there are no errors. So first of all, we want to call insert event here. 
to insert our very first event that we pass. We then get the event ID return from that function. You can see it returns a long. After that, we need to have our attendees with event ID because now that we have our event ID, we need to assign that to all of these attendees since we don't have the ID yet when we um, call this function. So I want to go over our attendees list and map each attendee to it.copy and we pass the new event ID to each of these attendees. And then we can finally call insert attendees with our attendees with event ID. And here we have these two database calls which belong together, but since we now execute that inside of such a transaction, there is nothing that can go wrong here. So if the app crashes for whatever reason in between here, then this event that was all we inserted won't really be inserted since it's uh, executed inside of a transaction. So in that case, you don't end up with an event which actually has attendees, but these attendees weren't inserted due to an app crash. So going back to our main view model, we can now also replace this here. We first create our event and our attendees list. Here we can just yeah, pass some random data for that event ID since we replaced that anyways with the correct event ID. And then down here, we can also remove this code and just say db.eventdao.insert event with attendees. And we pass in our event and attendees. And now we have one call, which is a transaction that will work exactly the same as before with a difference but that we are now pretty error proof when it comes to inserting these. So whenever you need to bundle some database calls with different tables, then please use such a transaction because otherwise you will run into issues that are very hard to find since you will find corrupt data, but it won't directly tell you, oh, this, this data is actually corrupt because you don't use a transaction that won't be written anywhere. Another advantage of using a transaction here is that if you don't use one and you have a normal flow, which would return the list of events, for example. So very often we have some kind of function here, which uh, gets events. I'm not going to specify this in all this detail, but that returns a flow of list event or so to just update your UI whenever the database changes. And if you don't use a transaction, this function or this flow will actually trigger twice, the first time when an event is inserted and the second time when attendees are inserted that belong to this event. So you just have additional computation effort because this flow collector might run multiple times, even though there's only one change. If you use a transaction, however, then you make sure that there's only one emission when this whole event with all attendees has been inserted. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. In case you are interested in automated testing for Android, as I've said, you can still get a huge discount on the new testing course bundle. Check it out down below. It will expire in 12 hours. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below. And I wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye bye.